I ordered this Sterling engine and I've been uh, looking into how it works. One of the first things I found out was everything I thought I knew about steam engines and automobile engines and diesels and all that stuff uh, actually works against you in understanding how this how this works. So the first thing is to forget everything you know about other engines and because all that will do is confuse you. I also found some bad information. Well, there's a famous child science teacher, whatever, he teaches children science. Uh, had a very vague uh, video and there's some videos that are just outright wrong. So anyway, I did some studying and I think I've got a low jargon, uh, easy to understand way of explaining how this thing works. Right now this is sitting over a cup of hot water and let me stop it and we'll go through it step by step of what's going on. This lower piston, first of all this lower piston has nothing to do with power. Um, it is actually has a completely different function. So right now as you can see this piston and this is called a displacer actually is up high and down below it's just full of air and that air is sitting above a cup of hot water separated by a piece of metal but so what's happening right now well that air is getting hot and what happens when air gets hot it expands okay so when the air inside this chamber gets hot what happens to this piston well this piston gets pushed up so the piston goes up and turns the flywheel okay as the flywheel turns carries it down and you can see this piston this lower piston the displacer piston moves down and what happens well that pushes the air that was down there that was hot up high now this lower piston this displacer is not airtight there's no seals nothing so all it's doing is it's sloshing this air back and forth so when it goes down it pushes the air out of the way and where does the air go it goes up to the top what happens to the to the hot air when it reaches the upper surface it releases its heat through this upper surface into the into the room because the room is much cooler than this cup of hot water when that happens it sucks down on this piston you'll see this upper piston go down it sucks that down because this air has gotten smaller it's shrunk it's gotten smaller in volume so it sucks this piston down or the atmosphere pushes it down to be more correct and once that has happened then the flywheel carries it and the whole cycle starts over the displacer goes up the air below it gets hot the air expands pushes this piston up then the flywheel carries it around the displacer goes down pushes that hot air back up to the surface it releases its heat through this upper plate uh, it shrinks in volume and the atmosphere pushes down on this piston and it just keeps repeating that over and over and over. And that's it. That's how a Stirling engine works. It's basically moving heat from one side to the other. And I've got another video where I'm moving heat from the upper surface down into a bowl of ice, but it doesn't really matter. All it's doing is it grabs heat from one side, allows the gas, the air to expand. That does the piston thing. And and the piston, or the, this displacer comes down, pushes it up, and it releases the heat up here. So it grabs heat here, releases it here, grabs heat here, releases it here. So it's more akin to an air conditioner compressor than it is, say, a steam engine or a gasoline engine, diesel engine, anything like that. So that's it. Pretty simple. No uh, big jargon, no big words. It's just uh, pumping heat from one location to the other, and that's it. Okay? I hope you found this useful and interesting in your understanding of Sterling engines.